so I bought a legendary pack like three weeks ago. I was one of the lucky people to get one. No way. Wow. And um, I got one and I immediately opened it. I, w- I wasn't going to wait, um, you know, and, and to each his own. Look, if yeah. you're if I think th- there's there's two different trains of thought. Obviously, he's in a different stratosphere than I am for investing. Like, I don't have millions of dollars invested in this. Yeah. I have a couple hundred dollars that's turned into a couple thousand dollars. Nothing crazy. Um so there's two different trains of thoughts here uh, going on. And I, I think that they're both valid. Everybody can have their own opinion of how they want to do things. For me, it's just like shoes. You could buy a pair of shoes and never wear them. Is that fun? And I'm just asking this because for me, as like somebody who is into shoes, I do like shoes. I want to wear the shoes. Like if I get a pair of like T-Max, I'm sorry, but I used to wear those as a kid. I'm going to wear them when I hoop next time. Like yep. it's just... I. I can't get over that. You're in the lab. How's the day going so far? It's busy, man. It's always busy, but yeah, it's good. I can imagine. So before we kind of like just do anything. Yeah. um, This is going to be like super chill. Usually for my podcast, I do research, bring on the guests, I do all these questions, but I figured for you, I've been following you on Twitter. You're super chill, seem laid back. So I was like, you know, we'll just chop it up and talk about a few different things. Perfect. Sounds good. Before we do that, you have so much cool stuff in your bio that obviously I want to touch on, but yeah. can you give a little introduction to who yeah. Oliver is. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, from since I was in like kindergarten, grade school, loved basketball and hoops. That's what I grew up on. Uh, to be honest, like soccer was the sport I played and mostly uh, my dad was from the UK. So I was big into soccer early on, but basketball was the one I enjoyed most watching. I was never the best basketball player. I knew that early on and I played up until high school. But by the time I got to high school, you know, I basically said (laughs) enough with basketball playing. I'm not good enough, but the next best thing is to cover it. So um, that, that was kind of how that, that started. And um, yeah, so I've covered basketball, love, love sports in general, just always fascinated by athletes and what they're able to do. And, um, you know, have done various roles in sales and sports and, you know, journalism and beyond. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, I, w- I would consider myself a very hardworking person that just enjoys uh, trying to connect the dots and help people um, see success wherever they want to see it. And uh, whether that's through journalism, life, uh, you know, like I said, I, I, I pride myself on trying to not just be the person who takes but also gives and so um I, tr- I try my best to make sure that everybody is successful at whatever um whatever we can make happen for them so absolutely i love that and i want to say grew up a soccer fan as well so seeing someone with anything umbro nice. in the background that's, there you go. that's a throwback man that's i got a story yeah this is my yeah. first jo- my first job ever oh uh wow. so i worked at a soccer store a retail soccer store i was 15 and a half they hired me. Uh, they could only work like the Oregon like hours for working. Like you'd only work like four hours a week or something. So they hired me at like the, the most I could possibly do. I worked on weekends. My dad would drive me to the, to the soccer shop. I'd pay my dad like a little chunk of change for the gas. You know, it was like a real, you know, I, that's, that's how it worked. Yeah. Um, that's one thing like, you know, I'm a parent, I got two kids, but, uh, sorry, I'm getting sidetracked here. But one thing that I absolutely, uh, believe in is like paying for everything yourself and understanding like what that means and what value means in general in life. Because uh, if you don't learn that early on, then when you are out of your parents' house, you're, you know, wherever you're living, you, you simply can't quantify what everything means. Um, So uh, long story short, worked at a soccer store and, uh, you know, sold, sold team gear and shoes and things like that. And got super knowledgeable into the space, loved working there. I mean, who couldn't, you know, if you, if you love soccer and you love, and you love Nike and Adidas and all the different brands that, that work in that Umbro. Um, so the day I left that company, uh, this little retail store called Far Post, um, uh, the manager said, uh, I, I had asked him years and years and years that I'd worked there. I'd asked him like probably every weekend, like, Hey, is that sign being used? Can I have that sign? Can I have that sign? It was like sitting in the back. It was all dusty. And, and so finally, like when I was leaving, he's like, Hey, I found this in the back. I think you may want this. And uh, that was it. So he gave me the sign and I've had it ever since. And um, when I got in my new house, I was like, I have to put this up. Like this is a, first of all, it's a dope sign. It is. Um, but secondly, I, you know, it's just like one of those things you, you have those like touch points in life where like your first 
this, your first that, and um, always remember where you came from. I mean, that's something that like a, a lot of athletes, you know, use as motivation. A lot of people use as motivation. I definitely find that to be true. So, yeah. I like that, man. I love where your mindset's at. I love the way you're speaking about things. I appreciate um, it. Staying on the soccer side, just a little bit for one last question. Yeah. Growing up, like, you know, who'd you idolize? Like who, who did you want to become as a young I mean, player? Yeah. When I was growing up, um, Alan Shearer was like my favorite right. player growing up. So Newcastle United's my favorite team, been a supporter of theirs since I was a little kid. Um, I went into a pub with my dad uh, when I was like four or five years old. His friend was a Newcastle fan. My dad's an Arsenal fan. We watched Arsenal Newcastle in a pub and my friend, uh, my dad's friend uh, was like, just, you know, giving him basically giving him shit for, for being an Arsenal fan. And I loved it. I couldn't get enough of it. I thought it was hilarious. And so I said, all right, I'm, I'm banding with you. I'm a Newcastle fan. <laughs> and uh, like the next week he brought, he brought me like a Jersey and stuff like that. So ever since then um, I've been a Newcastle United fan. So Alan Shearer is definitely kind of the legend. Lauren Rabur was one of the, the first guys I used to like emulate um, left footed, uh, free kick taker. I'm, I'm left footed. So any left footed player, I always kind of like idolized or look up to just because there isn't many in, in, in soccer. Um, and then obviously, you know, uh, I think when I got older, uh, I used to always try and watch like Thierry Henry, Dennis Burkamp, um, David Beckham, obviously can't, can't, can't say enough about that guy. I did like stories on him. I, I read his biography, stuff like that. It's a, all that stuff is super intriguing to me, but those are kind of like the four or five guys. And then obviously today, I mean, how can you not like Ronaldo or Messi? Um, and I, I'm not going to pick a winner in the fight. I think it's interesting. It's like, it, you know, if, if, if you're on like a struggling team or if you're like, uh, uh, I've always said this, like if you're like the bottom half of the Premier League, I think I want Ronaldo. But if I'm in the top half of the Premier League and I've got a better team, I'm going with Messi. So, it, it, you know, there's there's different ways you can take it and different ways you can slice and dice it. But I, I love both those guys. I think they're incredible to watch and definitely two of the best that have ever done it. I love it, man. Uh, growing up, watching all the World Cups, what, what was the country you cheered for? Uh, always England. My dad's from England. Okay. That makes um, yeah, we, we used to go to pubs together and, and things okay. like that. They would sneak me in or like – uh, put me outside the pub and I would watch from the window while he was inside. <laughs> it was, it was kind of weird. Um, but, uh, at the same time, it was awesome. I, I loved it. Like the atmosphere is just insane. And, uh, you know, we've got this, my dad's got this group of like 20 guys that are all England fans. So, um, from England, uh, originated in that area. So, um, it's super awesome to see. And that's definitely where my, where my allegiance lies. I love it, man. I love seeing the soccer was the first love. And transition to basketball and it's like kind of same here yeah uh, i even see some trading cards on top there are you like yeah, a sure. fan of are you actually collecting the cards or are those just yeah. some memories these no these are these are like some of my first cards that i got into um okay. i have some more over here i'm still trying to like figure out where i want to put them i actually started like offloading some of my cards as i got into top shots and um and so uh the cards i now possess are only like for the most part, there's a few here and there, but most of them are all people I've done interviews with, no personally, or like have a relationship with in some way, shape or form. Now, these ones up here, not so much. There's a couple of them that I've just kept. Uh, I got a Dirk Nowitzki and a Kobe and a Tim Duncan. I can see that Dirk fade um, from here, man. Like yeah, the Dirk fade. It's got an autograph on it, actually. So that's oh, the autograph one. So, um, but yeah, all of those are just like, uh, for me, like these are like guys that I remember watching, grew up watching, whatever the case may be. And then, uh, I don't know why I have the other ones. I have like Thomas Mueller up here. Uh, oh, Rick Barry for sure. That's like, that's one of my favorite, awesome. favorite guys to be around. So yeah, but all the ones like that are kind of scattered here are all yeah. players that I, you know, know in some way, shape or form have done interviews with, uh, things like that. And that, that to me is kind of cool. So that's really cool, man. Let's, before we hop into like which I really want to talk to you about is like top shot stuff. Yeah. 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 Like let's touch on like some of the things you've done, like you in, you know, you basketball insiders, dime magazine, but I want yep. to talk about like maybe like the big three. Yeah. And then kind of how you transition into cameo, which, you know, cameo is yeah. a big thing right now. That's yeah. Up. Yeah. I mean, I started the big three covering the big three um, early on before it even started. I got a uh, email from one of their PR people uh, and they just said, Hey, there's this like idea here's kind of like the nuts and bolts of it. And um, I just remember talking to a bunch of friends. I was like in a group text with a bunch of friends. I'm like, what do you guys think about this? Like, ah, you know, retired players league, man, and you know, all this yeah. stuff. And I'm like, I kind of like this. Like, why do you guys not? So 
I reached out to PR team and, and the only thing I really asked was like, you know, the, the only question I had was how did this start? Like what, who, what's the reasoning behind this? Like, I, I, I think that's like really important and key to understanding like why they're doing it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think the, I remember one of the PR guys was like, you know what? That's a great question. Like, I don't know. I'm like, okay, well, I'd like to do a story on it. And so that's how that started. That was like how the, the whole relationship with the big three started. So I got on um, a call with Ice Cube and with Jeff and like uh, their whole like team, talked to some of the players that were the first kind of people to, to, to go into it. And um, I just got the backstory of how, how, it, how it began and like why they were conceptualizing it, what made sense, what didn't. And, um, you know, Cube calls me like my first interview. Uh, it's funny. It was scheduled for like, I'm using some example, but it was scheduled for like noon and the, and like five minutes before I'm like panicking. I'm like, uh, I don't have a dial in. I don't have an email. Like, what am I like? Is he like, where is this coming from? And then I just get a, a random California number calling me and I'm like, no, no shot. He's just like calling me out of the blue. Like this, (laughs) <laughs> it's probably like the PR team guy who's going to yeah. connect me with another guy. And, and literally it's like, uh, I pick up the phone. It's like, yo, it's cube. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, this is like, That's I knew crazy. I was, inter- I knew I was interviewing him, but like, no, this isn't like <laughs> typically when you go through a PR team, it's like a PR guy and all these other people involved yeah. and like to, to just do that. And then this was supposed to be a 10 minute interview. And we went 45 minutes deep into like this conversation around like basketball and like hoops and like where, he thought this was going and like how it all started. And it just, from there, I realized there's like way more to this than people understand. And it's not just like some little like gimmicky, whatever. Uh, yeah. This is something that they really, really had a passion for. So I was all in, bought in. And um, very early on in season one, they brought me in to do like some production stuff. I hosted their podcast. Uh, I just did whatever kind of they were wanting me to do. And um, that's how I got in there. And, and, you know, during COVID, obviously, um, we, they didn't have a season last season. And so I, I was let go. Um, and, uh, you know, cameo had always been something that was interesting to me. I've known the CEO for like three, four, five years now before their, their real inception. And, um, it was something that intrigued me and they had openings in sports. And so, yeah, I initially reached out to, uh, Steven and just kind of was like, Hey, what, what do you think about this? Like, what, what does this look like? It's like, here's, here's like the connects here and you know, who you need to chat with and things like that. And um, yeah, I love it. I love it. I love everything about it. Cameo is just, um, it's different from anything else I'm done. Uh, You know, usually I'm covering something or I'm analyzing something or I'm, you know, doing that side. This, this is totally different. I'm, I'm, uh, we're on a rocket ship right now and it's, it's, uh, we're in the thick of it where, you know, people want to come on the platform, people want to do things. And um, it's just cool to see like all the social media aspects of it. Um, It's, it's been a really, really interesting and fun ride for myself. Just, just being a part of it. It's cool. And just for context, like you can explain it if you want, but book cameo, basically you can go on the website and there's like celebrities, athletes, influence, all these different types of people where you can pay a fee and essentially have them almost say something, almost anything you want. Yeah. I mean, anything that they're willing to do basically. So yeah, that's the beauty of it. It's all in the talent's hands. So the talent gets to decide what they do and don't want to do. Um, so, you know, if, if, if I want a message from Troy Aikman, uh, I can go on the website right now. I can book Troy Aikman and, uh, I can say, Hey, Troy, my, my brother's turning 25. Uh, he's a huge fan of yours, huge Cowboys fan. And then, you know, within three, four days, Troy's going to, uh, send a video directly back to you saying, Hey, such and such brother, you know, happy 25th birthday. Hope it's amazing. Go Cowboys, whatever the case may be. And, uh, that, that's what the platform allows everyone to do is it's, it creates these moments. And so obviously with COVID not being able to meet people, Mm -hmm. this is, uh, obviously accelerated the business, um, you know, incredibly. Uh, but even after, you know, you still have these moments in time that you want to share something with someone or a loved one or, you know, play a prank. I mean, I, I did our fantasy draft with Scott Hansen, the guy who does the NFL red zone stuff. So I had booked a cameo for Scott Hansen, Scott Hansen read off our draft lineup and, and drafted our teams. So um, not drafted our teams, gave us our draft order. Yeah. So we had no, like none of us had any idea what our draft order was going to be. He drew them out of a hat for us and read the teams off. And it was like, he's like, get ready for seven hours of commercial free football. And I was just like, this is dope. Like, uh, this is, this is amazing. This is the best, you know, hundred bucks I've ever spent in my life. So yeah. I love that. I love the use cases that are 
possible because of this this platform. Yeah. I, I think you guys, like you said, you're probably experiencing crazy growth, but I think it really is just the, the tip of what you sure. guys are going to experience. So that's cool, man. It's cool to see you to, just to give the listeners like some, some nice background about who you are and kind of like, at least, you know, why we're having this conversation for sure. But now I want to transition to the fun stuff. I want to, <laughs> I want to, man, I look, so I know you're in the NFTs. You're deep in it. Cause I'm, I'm following the tweets. I'm liking them. We're, you yeah. Know, yeah, yeah. Stuff. I'm doing the exact same thing. I love it. I love the potential, everything around it. I've just been looking for someone to chop it up with about NFTs. Yeah. So, so like a lot I'm of people here. don't know. Yeah, a lot of people just don't, you know, don't know. Um, so let me just throw it to you. Throw this out there. Yeah. What What's your thoughts on everything? Just give me like a conceptual thought about everything that's happening right now with NBA Top Shot. Uh, I'll use what Gary V said on Clubhouse last night. Okay. This feels like when YouTube burst onto the scene. It feels like when the internet first was invented. Like people were like, what is this? You know, like the whole AOL thing. Like, what is this? Like, yeah. I don't get it. Nobody understands. When text messaging first came out, like there wasn't really much of a use case. People didn't really understand how to use it. It was clunky. It was kind of weird. It was like, you know, a lot of things weren't the way they are today. Like, can you imagine not texting with iMessage? Like to me, I can't imagine a world without iMessage. Like, so if I don't have iMessage, I'm just like, I'm lost. I can't imagine people having Android. Sorry, no offense. <laughs> but like, it's just tough for me to not be in that ecosystem. So same sort of thing here. I think it's gonna take time, but like as people begin to understand that like sports cards, like, I don't want to d dismiss sports cards. Uh, I think sports cards are still going to be something that people are always going to collect and always going to love and always going to appreciate. And um, that's not what I'm trying to say. But I guess what I'm trying to say is a sports card, if it's not autographed or signed or have some form of like extra personable aspect to it, is just that. It's, it's, a, it's a piece of cardboard. Yeah. Like there is no, re like the reason that it has value is because people, people put value on it based on, a number or, uh, you know, the year it was built or made or whatever the case may be. The same thing applies to Top Shot. They're, like, yes, it's digital and uh, and it's on a blockchain. So, you know that, like, I, I use this example. Uh, you don't own a car until you go to the DMV and you get it registered in your name. Uh, same thing with Top Shot. You don't own a Top Shot until you go in and you buy one. And that's your, like, proof of ownership. So, it's the same, same like, kind of concept here. Uh, people just can't wrap their heads around it all the time. And I, I tell people all the time, and this is what Jack Settleman told me like super early on, one of the first guys to get on top shot. Uh, Jack was like, um, if you can't get around, if you can't get over the physical part of it, then I may as well not be having this discussion with you because there's no way you can't, you cannot clearly understand it without getting over that portion of things. Like scrap the physical yeah. nature of it, scrap all that information and just go straight to what this is and look at what it is. I think where the value lies, and for me personally, like the thing that like, I'm most excited about is the fact that the NBA is actually partnered in this and the players have a say and a voice in this and the players association is partnered with this. There isn't anything like that. Like we've seen Panini for 20 years and I'm not like using an example here, but um, I'm going to just because We've seen Panini for 20 years. This is a separate company outside of the NBA. Now they pay the NBA money. They partner with them. Same sort of idea and concept. However, I, you know, once the players have done their autograph signings and they've been paid their whatever amount of money to do that, there's no real ownership stake for them unless they went and bought their own cards and owned them, which we've seen players do. So very similar to the sports card market, NBA Top Shot's going to be the same sort of thing. And I like, I get this question all the time. Can sports cards exist if NBA Top Shot's going to take the market share? I think both of them will exist. I don't think there is a world in which like one is better than the other or vice versa. I think that you're going to see millennials drop onto Top Shot and they're going to go on there and they're going to understand it a little bit more because th that's all they do. They're on their phones. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not carrying around my card collection in my pocket and showing it off to people, but I do have a Top Shot and I'm happy to just send out a link to you and you can see all my moments right there. Exactly. So I do think that there's some massive benefits to like shareability that Top Shot has over any other kind of platform currently. And I think because they're partnered with the NBA and because they have the PA behind them, that it, th this makes it very appealing. And that's why I'm, I'm fully invested in it. And I absolutely think that it, the, the sky's the limit to where this can go.
hundred percent. What really got me excited was just like exactly what you said. MBA, MBPA are involved is like fully accredited. So it's like, that was like, trust was through the roof. As soon as you see that, right. Yep. Okay. Let me give some money here. And then, you know, secondly, just the ability to, to collect all these like dope moments and kind of like have that ownership. And like you said, I love the fact that, you know, let's say you got Pokemon cards in your binders or whatever, and that's cool. But like you said, we can take those all over the world and show it. But the fact that I can just shoot you my link and you can check it out and I'll check yours out and we can trade moments and do other stuff is yeah. exciting to me. And what's even more exciting is that it's in beta still, which I think people are just overlooking Yeah, all the yeah. time. You know, totally. it's like just the tip of the iceberg. And like, I can't wait to see once they let us maybe start trading packs in the future and just all these other functionalities and features that are going to come. But yeah. if we go back to the start, when did you actually, when was like the first day or month you were like, okay, I'm, I'm in, I'm getting a moment. Cause I'm assuming you got in earlier. I, I got in pretty early. I didn't get in early, as early as I would have liked to. And I think everybody would tell you the same exact thing, but I got in pretty early, uh, like December ish, like late December ish, I think. So like fairly early. And, uh, to be honest, Jack was the one who put me onto it. So I props to him, to be honest, Jack was also the person who put me onto sports cards. So there was an immediate level of credibility. Yeah. I, I still had questions, but like when somebody proves a concept to you, you're more likely to go back to that source and say, Hey, what do you think about X? Or, Hey, I see you're doing this. Why are you doing it? And, um, so I credit Jack a lot. Like people think that he's like some top shot, uh, wizard. And I don't, I don't know if he's like a wizard and he'll even tell you he's not like anything special. However, he is in early on a lot of this stuff and he does buy into things very quickly. And I do greatly appreciate that because, you know, without someone like him jumping into this space early on, I would not be in it. So um, definitely have to give a massive shout out there to him. But like for me, when I was, when I was jumping in early, uh, I had questions. Uh, absolutely. But the thing I always go back to with anything, like uh, it doesn't matter what it is. Like if somebody's like, Hey, you should try a new sport. Hey, you should try this or Hey, you should look at this. I, uh, you're always going to have questions. doesn't matter what it is. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have questions, there's a problem. <laughs> uh, you're doing something wrong or you're not thinking straight. So to answer those questions though, you always have to visualize what that looks like and actually participate in the activity in order to uh, not make assumptions. So that's what I did. I asked Jack a bunch of questions. I said, why, why would you do this? Why, why physical? Like, I don't understand. Like, there's nothing physical. Like he's like, just, I, he's like, just try it. I, I'm not telling you that yeah, you need to buy anything. I'm not telling you anything else. Just create an account, see what it's about, try and do some research, try and understand. And if you don't, that's totally fine. Like, like he said, if you can't get over the physical aspect, then, then you're lost. But so I went to the website, um, checked it out. I ended up getting into a pack drop like the next day. I think I bought like four packs. That was at the time where like packs were just like, wow, whatever. Yeah. yeah, whatever. And um, yeah, my strategy from the start has kind of been like, how do I get a LeBron? <laughs> so yep. LeBron or a Kawhi, like a big, big, big name. Bi uh, yeah, a big name player that I know could probably have long term value. Uh, my first big purchase was a Bam Adebayo finals finals moment against LeBron. So that, that was like my first big purchase is series one, like to a thousand or something. Um, but yeah, that, that's why I jumped in and that's why I believe in it. And I still believe in it. And like I said, I have had to do way too much convincing, uh, for a lot of people, but I think there's just like this fine line that you have to draw between like convincing someone to try something and convincing someone to do it. Like trying something is what Jack got me to do. And um, I think that's where a lot of people should be in this space. You at least have to try it. Just join, create an account. Uh, I've been very vocal about it. I've tried to gift people moments that don't really understand it just to like get some form of grasp. But I do think if this space is going to get bigger, they're going to have to release a hundred thousand pack drops and they're going to have to like get everybody a pack because I do think the pack opening experience is the reason I ultimately like bought fully into it. Like that was the, the, the real moment there was that pack opening and like the excitement. And uh, if you watch like Terrence Ross's stream yesterday, he's getting like anxious waiting yeah. to open the pack. Yeah. And so that feeling is unlike anything else. It's, it's very similar to a pack of sports cards, but I think that there's even more so some additional layers to it, uh, especially with the entertainment value of like adding the music in 
there's these little fine things that they've done that I don't think people really recognize until you actually do it and you're actually involved and you're in your, you're in that moment. And so that's why you see the pack craze. That's why you see all the people talking about it because everybody's excited about trying to get one. And I think that's going to last for a while. I don't think this is like going anywhere anytime soon. I, I totally agree. So I opened my first pack live on Twitch. I, first of all, I thought you, I was just going to click open and you're just going to see the cards. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Just like you, when I first got the music and whatever the effects and I was like, and you click one by one, I was like, Whoa, man. Like, yeah, this is dope. It's, it's like a drug. It's, it's basically going to be a drug for people. Right? <laughs> like well, I'm, we're all hooked already. We're going to act like we aren't, but we are yep. so like, that's been really cool. So let me ask you this. Um, the first mint has a podcast. I, you know, I listen to it. Those guys are great. Uh, one of the top collectors, his name is Kylo Ren. Uh, yeah. The, I've been actually, I've messaging him back and forth. Right, this, so this, yeah, this dude from India, like sounds great. Nice guy. He mentioned something yesterday and he was like, uh, you know, he recommends to not open packs and he had some, you know, good thoughts about it because you just don't know at the end of the day, like what's in that. And those could have huge resale value depending on what's left in the market and so on and so forth. Yep. What's your thoughts on, on, first of all, do you have any packs that are unopened? I don't have any unopened packs. I was considering, <laughs> do, so I bought a legendary pack like three weeks ago. I was one of the lucky people to get one. No way. Wow. And, um, I got one and I immediately opened it. I, I wasn't going to wait. Um, you know, and, and to each his own look, if yeah. you're, if I think that there's, there's two different trains of thought, obviously he's in a different stratosphere than I am for investing. Like I don't have millions of dollars invested in this. Yeah. I have a couple hundred dollars that's turned into a couple thousand dollars, nothing crazy. Um, so there's two different trains of thoughts here uh, going on. And I, I think that they're both valid. Everybody can have their own opinion of how they want to do things. For me, it's just like shoes. You could buy a pair of shoes and never wear them. Is that fun? And I'm just asking this because for me, as like somebody who is into shoes, I do like shoes. I want to wear the shoes. Like if I get a pair of like T-Max, I'm sorry, but I used to wear those as a kid. I'm going to wear them when I hoop next time. Like yep. it's just, I, I can't get over that. And it actually like, it doesn't bother me that other people don't wear them. It's totally cool to me that you can do that. It's almost like doing drugs or uh, doing anything like that. Drinking. Um, I, I'm not very much a drinker, but if my friends drink, that's totally fine. As long as they're not bothering me about it. Right. Like, <laughs> you know, as long as they're not acting crazy and like throwing up on me or things like that, I'm cool. We're good. Uh, same thing with drugs. It's like, you can do, do whatever you, I've always believed, like do whatever you want to do. Yeah. Just don't force it on me. Um, so I think that's, what's like key about this whole thing. Everybody has their own strategy. Everybody has their own approach. And I do agree with them. Like if you have a legendary, if I had that legendary pack from three weeks ago and I didn't open it, I guarantee you, I could probably get 10 K for it. No problem. Yeah. But, but, um, is that worth it for me? I, I mean, to each his own. Once again, I don't have a ton of money in the bank. I'm not like sitting here loaded or rich or anything like that. But at the same time, like the entertainment value and experience that I got from opening that pack and like just the excitement I got from having those moments and being able to trade them and sell them and buy them and like all that stuff. I think that's important. And I think uh, it's given me something, you know, like the entertainment value has to be in the equation. Even if I paid a hundred dollars an hour for the entertainment value, I'm in. Uh, so that's, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I think I love you said it to each your own. Everyone's going to want to do their own thing, but I think like that moment is, is so priceless. Yeah. Uh, the anticipation, the anxiety of, you know, is there a number one LeBron here? Like what, you know, what's going to be in there? Yeah. It's just priceless, man. So I, I like how you put that. Uh, <laughs> so let's, let's go, let's, let's try this. Let's give a little context just cause I realized that we didn't do it. And there's going to be people who listen to this podcast and they're going to be like, what the hell? How these dudes yeah. talking about? So I'll give a little context, and you'll feel free to just add in. But basically, sure. we're talking about NBA Top Shot, but before that, we're talking about <laughs> NFT, so non fungible token. Basically, the simplest way to put it, and like, let me know. I want to see if you have a better way to explain this. But think of Bitcoin. Bitcoin can be. If I have one Bitcoin, I can send you zero point two. I can send my mom zero point four, and it can be divided up. The special thing about NFTs is that they're fully unique. Everything has its own serial number, its own kind of uniqueness to it, and they're non divisible. So yep. based on that, did I miss something? Would no. you add something to make it simpler? I, I would say that it's, it's, it's like, uh, like, like I, in the like plainest, simplest, trade, I was trying to explain this to like my 55, 60 year old dad. And it's like the easiest way I could explain it is like, okay, dad, uh, you go to the car dealership and you buy a car. 
uh, it's still under the car dealership's name until you register it. Um, that's like the same thing just online. So like for me, that's how I like understood it, like as an old school thinker or whatever, like basically anything that you see online right now could be turned into an NFT if you would like it to be, you know, um, you could turn it into that and you could put it on the blockchain and the blockchain is essentially the DMV of online sourcing, uh, online stuff that you're going to be purchased. Yeah, exactly. Public data. And so essentially what you can do is, um, you can buy and sell and NBA top shot is essentially the marketplace for buying and selling NBA moments. And, um, so yeah, I, I would, uh, to, to people who have questions about it, I would say it's essentially like proving that you own something on the internet, whatever that may be. Oh yeah. That was, that was a nice and simple way to put it. Um, do you think this is NBA for me, like Adam Silver, all these guys, I know they he didn't directly do this as, as Dapper Labs and the guys behind it who probably pitched the idea and whatnot, but I always feel like the NBA is just at the forefront of doing things the way people love seeing them done. And Adam yeah. was a, you know, a great, great leader for that. Is this going to go into the NFL? Is this going to go into NHL, MLB? There's already a soccer <laughs> version of this, but will FIFA kind of get involved? Like, what do you think? I mean, I, I think you're dumb if you don't get into this space. <laughs> um, I mean, just look at like, so it was put to me the other day, um, take the marketplace fee. So for everybody who doesn't know, you can go to NBA Top Shot and you can buy a moment and then you can sell it. When you sell it there, you pay a 5% marketplace fee to sell that on the marketplace. Yeah. That 5% fee is what they're making. You know, what, what Top Shot is making, what Dapper Labs, what the NBA gets a cut out of. Well, I would, I would presume that the NBA is getting a large percentage of that. I, I don't know what percentage, but it, 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 it I would find it hard to believe that they would give access to all these moments and all these players and all this stuff without a pretty large chunk or percentage either invested into the company itself or the marketplace fee and like the revenue that's generated off of that. So if you take the past seven days of Top Shot, which it's blown up and it's definitely exponentially grown, um, it's 140 plus million dollars that have been transacted on, on NBA Top Shot. You take 140 million and you take 5% of that, it's a pretty significant chunk of change. You know, you're talking probably what, 10, uh, 7.5 ish million dollars. Um, and let's just say the NBA gets half of that. So that's like $4 million. Let's just call it that yeah. $4 million a week. Uh, that's not insignificant money. And to keep in mind, as you mentioned earlier, this is all a beta test right now. It's still in beta. It's not really in its full, full form. The NBA has not broadcasted this out, advertised it, pushed it to anybody. Their newsletters and email fan base must be millions of people by now. And they have social media followings that are the largest of any sports organization that, uh, you know, really exists. And not to mention the international markets aren't into this. I mean, I could go on and on and on about how many more people they could potentially push this to. So the fact that there's only 90,000 people on the platform now and they're making $4 million, let's just extrapolate, you could extrapolate it any way you want, but let's just say it's 10x for very, very conservative terms. Yeah. Let's say there's a million users on the platform in six months that's now $40 million a week. That's more, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, that's more than like most any other sponsor would pay the NBA in a week, no matter what it is. And that may be bigger than a TV deal at that point. So this is not insignificant money for the NBA and it's not insignificant money for the players association or the players. And so I, that's why I believe that if you're the NFL or the MLB or any other sports league, you're looking at this and saying, we need this now, especially with COVID and all the things that have happened with sports and how this has all evolved. And th this is not the, this is the very beginning. I mean, Roham, the CEO has mentioned on multiple clubhouse chats and uh, messages and things like that, that they, they, you know, you could, you could foresee a world in which two years from now you walk into an NBA arena, they have your phone. So they have your account um, information on your phone. And when you walk into the NBA arena, they gift you a moment from that game in the first quarter and boom, like, can you imagine buying a ticket that comes with a moment? Can you, like there's so many different like use cases that could be used with this where, where people and fans would get involved or be interested in it. And that to me is what's so intriguing. It's, it's to put it in the plainest terms possible for somebody who has no idea what Top Shot is, it's essentially fantasy sports, daily fantasy, a sports stock market and um, sprinkled in there uh, just a little bit of like this, fan experience that's never really been fully formulated yet. Um, so 
I, I think you just have so many mixtures of things that are involved and there's a lot of fan bases that could be interested in this based on the combination of things that I just mentioned and not on, I didn't even mention sports cards. Like that's yeah a huge portion of this. So um, yeah, I, I think, like I said, I think that the, this is absolutely going to continue to grow and explode and evolve and change and every sports league, if they're not already looking at this and trying to figure out a way in are, are going to be. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I wish that we could see the roadmap for Top Shot. And oh my gosh, could you imagine some of those product meetings? I just love to hear like some yeah. of the concepts and ideas that are being. I, I would honestly love to like be part of that and work there and just to experience exactly that and see what is coming. And like, you know, I just think it's an exciting time to be an NBA fan and just, you know, as a sports fan in general, like I said, hopefully other teams will pick this kind of you know, stuff yeah. up. But yeah, Dapper's Dapper's killing it right now. Um, how many packs? Have you collected? Did you get cool cats? Have you got a bunch, you know, from the I never spot? got cool cats. Uh, I got I got, bad luck recently. So <laughs> I've had like four or five pack drops with nothing. So, um, okay. yeah. And, uh, I haven't really been gifted any packs or thrown any packs. Um, I think early on, I think I probably got a total of maybe 15 packs. They were all pretty much common packs. There wasn't any, I mean, I got the legendary pack three weeks ago, so I, I should preface that by saying I got the legendary pack and then most of the other ones have been common. So, that's really all I have. I have a friend of mine that has some packs that he hasn't opened yet um, from very early on. He was in the private beta. He never even told me he was in the private beta. Oh, I had wow. no idea. And uh, it was really funny because um, he just like didn't even look at his account. So he was in the private beta and then he just never checked it out. Never, never looked at it, never said anything. Uh, six months goes by and I called him up like two weeks ago. I was like, yo, uh, have you heard about this Top Shot thing? He's like, yeah, yeah. I was in the private beta, you know, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, what do you mean you're in the private beta? Did you buy some stuff? Like, well, what's going on here? And uh, he's like, yeah, you know, I had some things, you know, blah, blah, blah. Just like very nonchalant, casual. Well, he goes into his account. He's like, yeah, I got this early adopters pack. Let's run it backpack, this blah, blah, blah pack. This right. I'm like, wait, what? What do you have? And then he's like, yeah, and I have like 100 moments. I'm like, what, what, kind, of, what kind of moments <laughs> are we talking about here, man? Uh, sell me your account for like 50K. I'm good. <laughs> you know, like I'm just like kind of like thinking about it. So then I go to Evaluate Market and he, he, I'm like, hey, there's this thing called Evaluate Market and there's these other places you can go. And so he goes in, looks at his account, his account value is over $100,000. <laughs> so, and he's like, Oliver, you just like, wh where did this come from? Like, I had no idea. Like this was, I was buying these things for like 20 bucks. I'm like, yeah. Man, so, man, man. so that's, you know, it's what it is. Uh, I, I think people are shocked when they hear about it, but at the same time yeah. you see about the growth and all the user base and everything else. And it just makes sense. It just makes sense. Yeah. Um, I was looking on evaluate the market today, just checking stuff out and noticing the leaderboard and just seeing like the top guy with like, he, I think he was like over 30 million in the account value. And just like the account values of like the top 1% or the top 0.1% are, are wild. You know, they yeah. have, hundreds thousands of moments um i think the top guy i have here is like 38 million 38 million moment valuation which obviously like doesn't mean he has 38 million but yeah just the fact that it's like holy crap this guy you know probably has some of the best cards ever to be put out so far yeah he's probably just smiling like whoever this dude is so yeah yeah it's cool because i i always go back to this you know and it's it's always like you know tw hindsight's 2020 right just like investing in stocks, you know, I invest in a bunch of stocks and everyone always wished, man, I wish I invested in Google when it, I heard, when I used all that kind of stuff. Right. Obviously I heard about it, I made top shot even before you joined, you know, it was yeah. just like one of those things like, okay, you hear about it, but it didn't like really click to be like, you know, what is this? Should I dive into it? And man, those regrets hit, hit you so hard. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you right now, I took the legendary pack. I opened it up and I was like, okay, well I can, I can get my LeBron moment now. I can sell all this stuff and I can go get LeBron moment. So I sold it. I sold it really early. Like I opened the pack and like within three hours, I listed all my stuff. I was like, I'm, I'm burning this stuff. I'm, I'm going to sell it. It's, it's probably the highest it'll ever be because nobody's opened these packs yet. I'm sure I can get a lot of money for it. Blah, blah, blah. So I turn around and sell this. I sell this, you know, numbers, uh, hindsight 2020, like you said, I sell this Rudy Gobert for like $2,700. I'm like, oh my God, I just made three X my money. How easy was that? Like, this is crazy. So I can't sit here and really complain, but guess what? Last week I go look at that same Rudy Gobert, yeah. the same serial number. That guy just sold it for $7,700. So I lost out on five grand right there. Yeah. Just one moment, one moment. So it's, 
it's interesting because you don't know when to buy and sell. And I do think that it's very similar to the stock market in that effect. Like you really don't know, Oh, is GameStop going to go up tomorrow? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. Are all the Reddit users just going to go buy it up right now? I have no idea, <laughs> but like, this is the same thing with top shot. I do think there is going to be some market um, correction at some point. Uh, not to say yeah. that it's going to go down or it's going to go up, but I just do think that the, the superstars are going to supersede everything else. And the rookies are definitely going to take their, their uptick. Uh, I think they're still very undervalued in, 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 in the top shot marketplace right now. And I think when you look at like these, like mediocre players that are going for outrageous numbers, those will probably die down a little bit to some extent. Um, but you know, I look at this like the sports cards industry when it first started, um, you know, Babe Ruth, rookies, you know, things like that. You look at all those cards and they're going for, you know, millions of dollars, Mickey Mantles, millions of dollars, things like that. Um, that's a very similar kind of uh, comparison I would make to this uh, over any other sport, too. This is the first sport to do it. This is the first league to do it. This is, these are the first moments ever made. So if anybody's like asking, like, hey, how do I get in? What should I get into? You know, things like that. Uh, you know, I think this, the safest bet, if there, if there is one, is a series one of basically any superstar player, um, because long term, they're not making any more of them. And short term, th there's just scarcity and, and rarity to those ones specifically. So. Totally agree. What, what are you most excited about with the whole Top Shop platform? Like what gets you the most excited for them, whether it's like a new feature that maybe can come out or just like, so for example, for me. I'm yeah. excited for the potential of hopefully one day. I don't know if it'll happen. I know it will just putting Kobe on there. What, whatever it is, everyone's going to try to get it. Yeah. But I'm looking forward to those kind of old school moments, which I know they already have the running back. Yeah. Just building on that. Maybe MJ comes out in the future. Who knows what will happen with that stuff? Absolutely. No. Yeah. I'm, it's a great question. I think I'm most excited about like the innovation aspect of things. Um, you know, I, I use this example a couple different times, like, what if Damian Lillard's moment also came out with like a piece of an unreleased single that he may have recorded. And like you had like a one of one Damian Lillard unreleased single attached to like his point, point nine shot moment against Houston. And it's like a run it back, like musical series, potentially like you could add music to it. Um, the other potential is like, okay, instead of releasing packs, what happens if you release it to a player and the player then, uh like releases it um essentially like uh whether they list it or whatever i think that's a really intriguing aspect like could you, could you imagine lebron has a top shot account right now he owns a top shot moment we have no idea about it and somewhere in the universe lebron puts it on the marketplace like nobody knows there's like this unknown about it and then after someone buys it, guess what? He puts out a tweet and he says, hey, someone bought my Top Shot moment. And it was like this whole hidden thing. Like, I, I think all that sort of stuff is really intriguing to me because I think like, the, like obviously the value on that one is going to go up exponentially. Oh, yeah. And the moment itself now is going to be valued much higher because guess yeah. what? That was the only one that he's like got rid of or whatever. But that sort of stuff really intrigues me because once you get players involved at that level, there's like a very interesting social change that could occur with like just general fans that don't know anything about it. And I really like where your head's at. I'm locked in right now. Yeah. I'm like <laughs> all, I'm like all in on this whole, like, yeah, dude. <laughs> you know, or, or Hey, what if LeBron is voicing over his moment? Oh yeah. Like that sort of thing. It's game yeah. over. Right. Like, can you imagine actually LeBron would be a good voiceover. Like he's got the deep voice and everything. Yeah. Like you could really like make something special with that. You put some like, uh, like hardcore action movie music to the background of him, like uh, commenting on his moment. Um, yeah, there, that it, yeah, that that game over at that point. You've sold yeah, me. Hundred percent. I think the possibilities are basically endless. And once you involve, like I know Terry Rozier, uh, he did something for charity. He was saying if you buy this moment, um, yeah, you get a signed jersey. Like those are small things, but that's like that's dope. You know, you yeah, definitely digital cool. signatures and stuff that that really makes the fan experience just go to that next level for sure. Oh, yeah. Fan engagement through the roof, players involved, all that good stuff. I think uh, obviously and people have talked about it, but like there there's some things that probably need to be worked out with like what <laughs> what can and can't be done with that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, but 
yeah, I think if they can insert it into the moments beforehand, then then we're in a good space. Yeah, man, that's exciting. I, didn't, I never even thought about like those little things you said about trying, you know, just including LeBron or like, I really like the idea of the secret account. I think the secret account is probably, maybe it's already being done. I hope it is. Could that? I don't know. Yeah, man, that could drive some crazy like engagement and just like uniqueness to whoever bought that in that moment. Like say, so you know, LeBron flies him out to meet him or something like, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. There's, there's a, there's a ton of ways you could go with it or Hey, guess what? The entire team owned it. Can you imagine LeBron getting all of his teammates on top shot and LeBron gifting it to uh, AD and then AD gifting it to Rondo and then Rondo gifting it to someone. Yeah. And then it's owned by the entire team. And then they just list it. And like, everyone has like kind of digitally touched it. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Like, Oh man, that's, that's a cool idea, bro. Yeah, wow, that's a really cool. Thing. I'm I'm excited because I know they're bringing on like, for example, someone like Shaq. Yeah, you know, and I'm I'm basically anticipating. I'm hoping that he's gonna do something funny and cool for whatever that moment is, whether it's a pack or a first sale or whatever, to really like kind of like get things. Oh, for sure. Just, Give me oh. a Shaq and a fool one. Like I want a Shaq. Oh and man, a fool. Shaq and a fool collection is actually yeah. a pack is exactly what we need. Yeah, yeah. The next iteration is somebody putting like a picture frame that you can throw all of your moments on as like a highlight reel oh it moments. just lives it lives in the background yeah Man, it's got like its ooh, own like ip maybe. address and you have your own internet connection to it like it connects to wi-fi and you just literally like log into your top shot account and boom it just like shows all your moments in a collection are you building that already is no you, you, you no. Really lock that idea down <laughs> no, no i know i somebody told me i should it's and a great I, idea you no know, i I'm just leaving it out there for the universe. I don't, I, you know, I think Jack Settlement actually said that he was working on something. So in, in theory that that's coming in some way, I don't, I don't know exactly what, but to me, that's the next level of collecting, right? Cause then you can actually showcase it in your office or if you're streaming your games or whatever the case may be. Yeah. It kind of just comes up. I like that, man. I can, I picture some kind of Iron Man type type design where it's like super futuristic, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Up. Yeah. And it's cool. Okay. Um, talked about a bunch of cool top shot stuff. Um, it's been 45 minutes. I know you have a busy schedule. Yeah, I'm good. So, so uh, let's go through a few more things though, since you, have, since I think you have a, a little bit more time. Yeah. What is, what is the favorite moment you own right now? If there is a way to, for you to pick one. Uh, do you have a favorite player before you answer that? I don't really. Okay. No. No, okay. I'm, I'm not really, privy to one person. Not privy to one person. Um, you know, I've got a Terrence Ross metallic gold and I've got a CJ McCollum metallic gold, uh, both series okay. ones. Uh, the CJ McCollum is a pretty nice little, little, um, moment. Um, yeah. so that, that's probably my most valuable moment. Um, I think it's somewhere in the region of 5,000 or somewhere in that area. But I mean, in terms of like the moment I like the most, I, I, like I said, I, I think the bam out of bio stuff is very undervalued, especially in the finals. Yeah. And that was my first moment I purchased on the on the website uh, outside of like get, getting a pack. Um, so for me, like Bam Adebayo over LeBron in the finals, um, that's like a pretty significant moment that I think people have like not even like it, it, literally the, the it's like 500 bucks for a series one. And uh, it's crazy to me. He's like a top 25 NBA guy. And it, it seems to me like something that definitely should be higher valued. I also bought like I'm not super into the whole serial number thing, but I got a uh, number 1300, like something, and he's number 13. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, I tried to go that route with it a little bit. Um, you know, I, I have a couple of rookie things that I think, uh, I, you know, I really like Denny Avija. Uh, I'm a big fan of Denny Avija. I think he's like a, a pretty solid NBA guy already. And, and, you know, obviously he's a rookie. So I have a Denny Avija, I've got two Killian Hayes and a Obi Toppin. Ooh, yeah, I'm I'm all in on like all the the rookie guys. Yeah. Um, not just for value purposes, just because I think that they're, you know, good players. I think they definitely are undervalued in the Top Shot world. I don't have five grand to drop on a Lamelo, but um, yeah, his stuff. <laughs> if I mean, if I could, be expensive, but yeah, I was trying to get one early on too, and I couldn't. I mean, I like I didn't have the account value to like really make that move, but um. I've been a big fan of Lamelo. That that would probably be my most favorite moment if I could get a Lamelo, because that, you know, that that this guy I've believed in for a, a pretty dang long time. I've yeah. covered him in high school, and so like, oh okay, yeah, cool. Very, very long term. Uh, uh, I'm I'm an, I'm an admirer of what he's done. So yeah, I love Lamelo's game, and I think he's going to be an absolute stud in the league. 
Um, and yeah, I also did try to get his moments and then I realized, damn, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they're five X anybody else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the price is a, a, a little bit crazy. <laughs> um, what do you, what do you want to see come out? Like if you, if you were, let's say you're on, you're, you're running top shot, you get a call of shots and you get to pick out, you know, the next pack, the next moments, you know, whatever that's coming out, what would you put out this week or tomorrow? Um, I'd start series three tomorrow. Seriously. Okay. I would just stop the series two runs. Yeah. Because I think what's happening right now is there's a lot of series two on the market already. And I think people are getting worried that, you know, if, if you release more series two, then potentially the value of all the series two goes down. Now, with that being said, the user base has grown a ton. So like, I don't think that necessarily to be true, but I, I think what needs to happen, I guess it doesn't necessarily have to be series three. I just think there needs to be a another set that's that's to fifty thousand. So like the people who have five dollars in their pocket can go buy a moment. Yeah. Um. You don't want to outprice like those general fans that maybe don't have season tickets that don't have like the money to basically afford, you know, fifty sixty dollars for their minimum moments. So, I hope that like, there's a way to to price in some of the the audience that you know just wants to buy whoever an Alec Burks for three bucks, you know, um, exactly. something yeah. like that. So I think that's where I'm thinking with this. Like, I, I don't really have like an idea of like what moments should be released or how it should work. But if, if there could be, you know, units to 50,000, I think that that makes a lot of sense. And I think it wouldn't devalue like the rest of what is already on top shot, because now you're actually essentially making the rest of the market more rare by saying, Hey, the rest of these units that we're going to start offering are going to be to 50,000 or a hundred thousand. Yeah, totally agree. Um, yeah, that's a good point. So my understanding when top shot was kind of, I guess, created, you know, last year or whatever it was, it was, it was basically for everyone. It was, you know, it was for the fans who love the game. And, you know, that's why even when I got on, like, I'm super lucky. I I got on, you know, after you still, but I was still able to get those $5 moments, 10, 15, like, and I was like, my only, my only regret was not understanding that how the, not understanding that I could, I should have bought 10 of each. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You could have easily. Now I got the LeBron moment, the LeBron three pointer for like, I think 60 bucks. Yeah. It's like over two G's. Yeah. 1400, 1500 or whatever it is now. Yeah. And I was like, man, I was sitting there like, man, stupid was I for not buying like 10 of them and yeah. the real numbers um I mean hindsight like, 2020 you just don't know yeah you just don't know and that's why I love that we're in it and we're learning and like we can actually like be able to tell like so now just like you um people are hitting me up like my family friends I'm like hey like yo I know you guys love basketball and you guys always tell me you want to invest right but you it's like the perfect combination right perfect here. combo like they they don't like they don't want to get into stocks Yep. And I was like, okay, perfect. This, this is great. You, you know, basketball, you can use your knowledge to try and help you with it. And I feel like for the first time, this is kind of like an investment that we can control a little bit. Not, you know, we don't have full value over, but like, at least we know, like I spent a hundred bucks on BAM, you know, yeah. I, that was my choice to buy that. So if it goes up or down, that's your choice and you feel comfortable down. doing it. Exactly. 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 So yeah, that's, there's, just, ba- there's bad like, moves and good moves that you can yeah. make just like the stock market. But with the stock market, you look at like the news and you look at what's going on. And I just can't wrap my head around all of it to be completely frank. Like I just can't, I, I don't know. Like it, it's a lot of different things and there's yeah. obviously all these different metrics. Also, to be honest with you, I feel like the stock market is always manip- It's always been manipulated. And uh, you know, I, I invested in like revolve in the stock market when they first IPO and revolve, if anybody knows like women's fashion, like thing, yeah, they're, big, yeah. they're, they're extremely profitable. They're extremely profitable for being like a very young company. Well, they have like stitch fix and all these other companies that are losing millions of dollars, but they're valued much higher. And so I just can't wrap my head around like the concept of like losing a bunch of money and still being like, I, I just, that know, whole concept and like why the stock market gives them the plus and not, you know, every time Revolved had a, had an earnings call, uh, I would sit there and be like, okay, they're going to blow it out of the water. They're going to blow it out of the water. And then we sit there and they blow it out of the water. And guess what? The, the stock price is going down. And I'm like, okay, well, I, I guess I don't know anything about the stock market. I should probably just stop. I, I just need to stop. Uh, so th- th- that's, you know, th- I think hopefully this is very similar to daily fantasy where you can now put your money in the players that you believe in. And not just for one night. Now you can put them in there for a year, let them sit. You could put them in there for exactly. three months, whatever the case may be. I mean, I had a Shea Gillis Alexander. 
uh, before he had that great game yesterday and the marketplace opened up and I had already had the Shea Gillis, Alexander, Alexander listed for like okay. double or triple X and it sold. And I was like, all right, great. It sold. Cool. I'm good. I'm chilling. Uh, so I, I think that sort of thing is cool. It's, it's always good to see when you can make your money back or make more and things like that. But uh, ultimately just, I think with anything like this, that's new and different, just like gambling or anything else, figure out how much money you feel like you can't afford that isn't going to, you know, blow up a relationship or blow up your life or like, you know, take you out of, take, yeah, take debt out for it, <laughs> more, take your mortgage and, you yeah. know, yeah, you get a foreclosure or whatever the case may be and just know that it's gone. That's always been my, like when I gamble, it's like, okay, I have $200. I know exactly how much money I have. Once this $200 is gone, it's gone. I don't have any more. And guess what? I'm okay with losing this $200. <laughs> If you approach every like investment decision that way, you will never ever feel like you got ripped off or you got screwed or you lost out on anything. And yeah. so like right now with Top Shot, it's like, yeah, I lost five grand on that Rudy Gobert, but guess what? Eh, you know what? Things happen. I'm up a bunch of money. I, exactly. I you know, I'm doing fine. Yeah. So that that's so kind of like have. my thing for anybody that's trying to get into it. Everybody keeps asking me like, what should I buy? What should I buy? What should I buy? I'm like, you know what? What do you want to buy? <laughs> like what player do you like? Yeah. What player do you believe in? Cause honestly, my opinion is just as good as yours. I don't have any inside info. I don't know anything from anybody else. So, yeah. you know, I think it's important to buy into something that you believe in. Yeah. And that's what makes it so fun, right? If you happen to like Mason Plumley, and you know, you from his city, go buy, Dude, you know, go buy his moment. And then I have Terrence Ross. Terrence Ross isn't like a big time NBA yeah. guy. Terrence Ross is from the 503 where I grew up. I, I covered him when I was in high school. Like this isn't someone like I don't know. So for me, it's like dope. I get, I get to own the guy that's from my hometown. Like yeah. that, that's cool. I saw when he was tweeting you in gifted him a moment. <laughs> I was like, that was actually really, really cool to see. Um, and yeah, that that takes me to this last, this last thing we can touch on is like the dope community that is being built around NBA top shot. And obviously I know it's going to change with time and there's millions of people, but right now, man, like I'm in the discord, you know, I got a TikTok <laughs> for it. I'm, I'm doing luckily being able to do podcasts with you and I'm following yeah. other podcasts. Like, man, I love it. People, the, 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 the real people in it, like who are like just enjoying it. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. ourselves, not like, the just don't read the general discord. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm yeah. yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I don't want to like say the wrong word here, but like, I love those people. Like, everyone's hype about it. You know, everyone's sharing their experiences. We're getting, we're helping each other out yep. you know, with knowledge and stuff. And you know, what's your thought on the, on the community? Cause for me, this has been one of the funnest communities to be a part of. And it's only been like two months. Well, so when COVID hit, it's like, I can't go to an all-star game. I can't go to games in general. I can't go like, this is by far the longest period I've ever been that I have not been able to travel anywhere. And uh, I think it's hard on a lot of people. And so like, I think that's where this starts is from that. Like, I, I, under, I understand like the community is amazing and I, I totally get that. And I'm not discounting that at all, but I'm just basically simply saying that I think all of us in the NBA community that, you know, like uh, guys that I know, like Alex Kennedy and people like that, that I used to run into at summer leagues and I used to run into at all-star games. It's been like almost two years now of like not being able to go anywhere or do anything. And so like, for me, I don't have anywhere to go. I can't like, Hey, let's go to a bar and watch a game. Hey, let's go. Like all that stuff is gone. So I think everybody's kind of adapted. We've got these group chats and like, you've got clubhouse and you've got this and you got that. And I think it's amazing. Like all these things are coming out of nowhere because people need something to socialize with. Like we still need to socialize. And while technology is great and like you can text message, it still doesn't have that emotion around it. You don't have that like connection with people. And what I think is great about like the discord and then about the top shot community is I've been on the phone more than I ever have in like the past three years at night on the weekends. Like, dude, I had someone call me at like midnight last night. What's this, what's this pack drop about, bro? Like, what are we doing to do? Like, but you know, I was just like, <laughs> dope. Okay. Let's like, <laughs> slow down here. First of all, second of all, like don't expect to pack like all this other, but like, I think going back to your point, like, yes, the community is insane and it's great. And like, everybody's just like totally on this rocket ship together and they love it and they enjoy it. And it's cool. It's just, I, I don't really have a way to describe it other than 
I think people have been waiting for something to socialize about and talk about and be excited about. Yeah. And I think like, just look at what COVID has done to not only like covering NBA basketball, but also just a lot of people's job. I mean, I lost my job during COVID probably 50% of America probably, you know, lost some form of job or some form of uh, economic, had some form of economic impact towards it. So I think people are always looking for something now because they feel, you know, that, that, they've lost out. Like I know I have financially, like, uh, you know, when I lost my job financially for three to four months, I was, you know, there, there's a period in time when, which you're thinking in the back of your brain, like what is going to happen? How am I going to pay the bills or feed the, you know, this or like anything, anything of that sort. So I think with that, like the combination of not socializing along with what happened during COVID and what has happened. And then you put together this like platform that allows people to, um, have fun, enjoy themselves at a very low entry point. I mean, you talk about these packs. Yes, there's 50,000 people in the Discord complaining and bitching about not getting a pack, but the other 10,000 people or 5,000 people that got a pack, that is like, you just made their week. You just made like everything. And guess what? My friend opened a pack. He got a LeBron. He got a whatever. Dude, I'm like hyped for him. I don't even, it doesn't matter. Like I know this guy, I've known him forever, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he, he got X out of the pack. Perfect. That's dope. That's dope. And like my friends who got cool cats pack, they, they're like texting me, like, what number are you in line? I'm like 58,000. I ain't getting one. <laughs> yeah. But I they got one. That. Yeah. And, and so once you get over that initial, like, yeah, they, you guys got them and I didn't, you're happy for them. They got these cool cats packs. They got to make some money. They got to have fun with it. They got to keep some moments, whatever the case may be. That I think is uh, something that nobody like as a group collectively in sports and then also in basketball, there just hasn't been much of this happening. Uh, I just don't, I don't see any kind of comparison. So you're right. The community is amazing. And I think that's built off of how Top Shot built this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I give them credit for using Discord. There are a lot of companies for out sure. there that would never, ever think about using Discord to kill to connect all these people and to connect the dots and announce things and put things up. And that I think really changed the game and kind of it, you've inserted a lot of like, not only the, the, the gamers and like the people into technology, but you've also inserted this like NBA basketball journalist culture. Uh, So it's, it's amazing, man. I think it's so dope just to see like what they're doing, what they're going through, how they're going to be in five months and six months and yes. think about kind of what, what's going to happen. Um, yeah. I did. Sorry. I'm rambling on. No, I love it, man. I, I love hearing, like I said, I've been looking for someone to chat with about this stuff, man. So I love hearing your side of it for sure. Um, and, and letting you like, you're just, just kind of vent, not vent it out, but just kind of get it out there. So I don't want to spend time on discord. Cause like I talk for hours on discord. <laughs> But I've been a huge believer in Discord for a long time. Yeah. I think like they're just at the tip of it too, where people are understanding like to foster and build a, a massive community. Like, I don't know if, honestly, I don't know if anyone does it better than no. Discord. No, yeah. I think it, it's it's tough to replicate um, what yeah. they've done. I, I, I do think when I first started it, and I still have this problem to this day, it is a little bit, it's always been a little clunky to me. Like I I, I haven't really fully grasp all the different so things much. that you can do yeah there's yeah. a lot of scrolling and there's yeah. a lot of different places you can like end up and read through and you know you look at the top shot discord it's almost to the point where it's like it's lot, i'm never man. i'm never going in that general section anymore oh, <laughs> i'll tell you that you know it's just like <laughs> oh, it, well it's toxic first of all but second of all there's just so many people messaging in it at one time i can't even keep up with what's going yeah. on so um I, I, yeah i do love discord i think it's definitely changed the game for a lot of people and, and obviously it's the, the go-to source for any gaming with audio so yeah. um yeah no i definitely think that that's played a part in all of this so look um this has been a, a, a great conversation what i would like to do is like hopefully we can do this maybe an, an, another month from now another two months from now and just catch up and see where top shot has gone from where we talked it. now to then um it's, it's honestly been dope talking to you and actually finally making the face connection and sure. having this interaction. So I appreciate the time again. Um, before we head off, can you let people know where to follow you, you know, specifically also on Twitter? Cause you guys need to make sure you follow this man on Twitter. Oh yeah. I'm Oliver Maroney on Twitter, Oliver Maroney on Twitch, uh, you know, uh, Oliver Maroney on cameo, Oliver Maroney, <laughs> <Everywhere>. wherever, <laughs> wherever that is. So yeah, that's basically my ad for uh, actually O Maroney on TikTok, I guess if you're a TikTok person, but yeah. Well, what are you making on TikTok? 
I don't really do anything anymore. Okay, okay. I, 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 like I, I, every once in a while I'll post a gaming clip or, you know, I think I got, De- we got, we had Deandre Hopkins on cameo a few months ago and I posted his like video when he came on, uh, things like that, but nothing, nothing too crazy. I used to post a lot of really cool, like evergreen content, but I kind of like, just, just, I get too busy. I, I can't, cut up a video and edit it and do all the things that you need to do, especially because I was kind of on that TikTok rocket ship when they first started. Okay. Yeah. So I was lucky to get in pretty early. And now I'm realizing like my content that I posted back then was being seen by a lot more people because there wasn't anything out there. (laughs) And now that there's so many people like producing and editing and like really, really creating good content, I can't compete. I just can't. I just, I'm just going to be honest. I don't have the time to spend three hours to edit a TikTok that's 30. I just don't. Yeah. And that's you know props I mean? to them. Props to them. Take what you can and run with it. But I do not have the uh, capacity to do all that. <laughs> so I, I almost forgot to mention something before we hop off is the gaming side. Yeah. Um, you know, we're huge gamers. I know I almost forgot because like you're always playing video games. I play so, video games almost every night. What's what's the go-to? Like, what games are you, like, really enjoying right now? Is it Warzone? Is Warzone. it some other things? I mean, I don't even really like Warzone. Like, it's hard for me to like Warzone. It really is. It's been very difficult the past few months just to be, like, yeah, uh, enjoying it, like, the way I used to. But at the same time, like, it's still the go-to. That's what I play. Uh, I play FIFA sometimes. Okay. Um, I tried to dabble into, like, the whole old-school universe of, like, playing. I played, like, Nightfire for a few nights, like, James Bond Nightfire from, like, way back in the day. Dang. Goldeneye. Uh, tried to. Sweet. Attempted to. And then I realized how hard it was and how bad the graphics were. And I was just like, man, this is not what I remember any of this being. So I was just like, I, I give up. And, like, people were just like, what the heck is this? I'm like, it's James Bond. Like, what do you think this is? I'm not playing some you know scrub a dub game that just came out you know it's so, funny because at, at that time you know uh his kids ground and i man. it's like yo like you know this is the best thing ever and now yeah. it's like, dang, we played that for 20 hours a day like, yeah yeah <laughs> no it's crazy so that's basically what i play um i try and play with different people every day I try and play with I don't play with great players. I, I'm not. I'm not a great player. Uh, what I pride myself on is just being able to have like a personality and have fun with it, and I just enjoy it. I don't stream for subs. I don't stream for any other purpose other than just to do it for the fun of doing it and kind of understand what streamers go through. So we're gonna we're gonna have to run some games soon. Is the Twitch also Oliver Maroney? Yeah, it's Oliver Maroney. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're so. gonna have to run some games. So we're gonna we got for some sure, man. coming for in the lab gaming. So I think we'll have to connect with you let's go let's do it yeah no for sure i love i love getting involved in those i've done like two tournaments so far i played one with uh frank nitty uh from like yeah 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 yeah. your league and stuff so me and him played in a ball his life one that happened like a few months back um i've had a couple of friends mention to me that they want to run one and then you know you you get to actually scheduling it and they bail so uh, the toughest part, man. <laughs> that's the, that's the toughest part of all of it. But yeah, every night I try and play with someone, you know, whether it's Leonard Fournette or Jordan Poyer, some of the guys that I know, good people, like they, they enjoy playing it. They love playing the game. So anyone who loves playing, I'm down. I love it, man. So we're going to, we'll stop there. We're going to reconnect wh- whenever we have some time it. in the next few months to kind of just keep building this top shot stuff out and see if you got a LeBron by then and see if I got a LeBron or a LaMelo and just keep Do building it. It from there. <laughs> so thank you again, man. I really appreciate it.